All right, overall, it, the first slide was pretty good, but I wanna tell you this, like I'm seeing a lot more work being done than needs to be done, and I don't know if it's like, that's a habit of how you learn how to do it, but it will save you time if you don't do it that way. So the, the, for one and two, where there's nothing in front of the X squared term, you do not need to do first times last. So I'm seeing that a lot. You're still doing first times last and putting that in and then factoring by grouping. And it's taking time away from stuff because you don't need to do it that way. If there's nothing in front of the X squared term, then you're just looking for the factors of the last number that sum to the middle. So factors of six would be one and six and two and three. Those are the ones that add up to a positive five. So it's just X plus two times X plus three. You will still get the right answer if you do first times last, but you don't need to do it and it takes longer. So same thing for two. I'm looking for the factors of negative six that sum to negative one. Kumar, personal space. So if I, and the bigger has to be negative based on this middle one. So negative six and positive one or negative three and positive two. That's the one that gives you the negative one. So I get X minus three and X plus two. For the third one, this is the first time that there's something in front of the X squared term. This time you have to either do first and last or trial and error. If you do first times last, it's two times negative five. You get negative 10. And then you're looking for negative 10, the product that sums to negative nine, which ends up being one and negative 10. Plug those in place of the X that's there. That'd be positive one, negative 10 X minus five. And then factor by grouping, you could take out an X and you could take out a negative five and you should have gotten two X plus one and X minus five. Order doesn't matter, but the signs obviously do. Again, overall on that first slide, not so bad. Just don't do more work than you need to do. Then we switch to solving. Your quiz is also going to switch. You're going to do some factoring. You're going to do some solving. So you want to pay attention to the directions. When we're solving, you should go all the way to the end where it says X equals. So for four, there's nothing in front of the X squared term. We're just looking for the factors of negative 24 that sum to negative five, which is negative eight, positive three. And then you want to split and solve these and you get X equals eight and X equals negative three. Those are your two answers. For five, you first have to move the 18 over. So X squared minus three X minus 18 equals zero. Nothing in front of the X squared term. So we're looking for the factors of negative 18 that sum to negative three, which are negative six and positive three. And then we split and solve. And I get X equals six and X equals negative three. And then six, I'm gonna add the two to get it to the other side. And I get X plus one and X plus two split and solve. And I get X equals negative one and X equals negative two. So again, if you went all the way to the end, most of you did, got them right, just be careful with your signs. Um, just make sure you pay attention where it says solve. If it says solve and you don't go all the way to the end, you're going to lose credit on the quiz. So you want to make sure you pay attention to the instructions. Seven and eight. Seven can be done two ways. Seven is the one probably you guys made the most mis amount of mistakes on. So be careful here. Seven can be either factored because they are the difference of two squares and then split and solved. Or you can use the even root here. So if I were to factor it using the difference of two squares... I would square root the 4x squared, it'd be 2x. Square root the 49, one gets a plus and one gets a minus, and then I would split and solve. Oh, I did that. And divide by two, and I get x equals negative seven halves. 2x would equal seven, and x would equal seven halves. So my answers are negative seven halves and positive seven halves. That's one way to do it. The other way, which a lot of you started, but then made some mistakes along the way. So when I see this, it is, there's no X, there's just an X squared, which means I can use the square root property. And that says isolate the X squared. So I would add the 49, four X squared would equal 49. I can divide by four. And then when I square root here, I have to do plus and minus. And you have to square root both the numerator and the denominator, and that's where some of you went wrong. 
Some of you forgot the plus and minus, and some of you forgot to, to square root the bottom. So be really careful here. This should have been 7 over 2 as well. All right, then looking at 8, I want to move the 5 over. 3x squared minus 2x minus 5 equals 0. First times last here, negative 15. Factors of negative 16 that sum to negative 2 would be negative 5 and positive 3. Plug those in. Factor by grouping. I could take out an X. And then technically you're taking out a 1 there. When you don't take anything out, it's a 1. So I'd get 3X minus 5 and X plus 1. And then split and solve. And you get 3x equals 5, x equals 5 thirds, and x equals negative 1. Yeah? You got to look for the factors of first, so first times last, factors of that that sum to the middle, and then it was negative 5 and 3. Put them back in with an x on each of them. They take the place of the two. And then you factor by grouping. That stays. So the first term stays, the last term stays, the middle term gets replaced with the two. All right, for these last two, it says use the quadratic formula. So for the first one, A is 1, B is negative 5, and C is negative 2. Quadratic is negative B plus and minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So with this one, negative B, oh, sorry, C is negative 2. Negative B would be 5 plus and minus the square root of negative 5 squared minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is negative 2, all over 2 times A, which is 1. So then it's 5 plus and minus the square root of 25. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8, so plus 8, over 2. That's 5 plus and minus the square root of 33 over 2. 33 only breaks down to 3 and 11, and neither of those repeat. So you'll leave it just like that. Even though the homework had you go to the decimal for the quiz, you'll keep it as a uh, square root, simplified square root. All right, for 10, you've got to add the 1. So I'd get x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 0. And then a is 1, b is 3, c is 1 negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a negative 3 plus and minus the square root of 9 minus 4 over 2 negative 3 plus and minus the square root of 5 over 2. so if it's a square root that can be simplified obviously you need to if not you're going to keep it in that format that's it. Quiz review is on. Big ideas. Make sure you're prepared. Have a great day.